Welcome to this episode of the Growth Cast. It is me, Jackson Campbell, joined again with Dallas Pruitt for an exciting episode today, an exciting extended cut. We're going to talk about overcoming adversity in business and life. And we're going to actually share some experiences of things that some things that I've overcome and some things that Dallas has overcome. So definitely stick around to the end of the episode because we're going to have a lot of a lot of really good actionables from these experiences as well. So definitely stay tuned. Before we dive into the topic, before I really turn it over to Dallas, we start diving into some actionables about how to overcome adversity. Um, just want to just give everybody a reminder: like, subscribe, and share the growth cast. It is a oh, yeah. very like Dallas spends a lot of time on this. Tyler spends a lot of time on this. I spend a lot of time on this. And Jaden spends a lot of time on Jayden this. Spends a lot of, spends the a lot whole of time team, on everybody this. spends a lot of time on this. And it, it means a lot to us. And we love doing it. And we want it to reach as many people as possible. So please share. Please share. Again, Monday through Thursday, we've got Dallas Pruitt with the daily drips. Friday, I jump on and I get the, the opportunity to interview and pull wisdom out of Tyler Devereaux. And then on Saturday, I get the opportunity to actually interview Dallas rather than just having content prepared i get to interview dallas and get some get some real natural raw knowledge from him try to try to tap into his knowledge even deeper so um so that yeah Dal, anything you want to say before we dive in yeah build on that not scripted a lot of the time i think that, that that's uh i don't know i just this is this is the real us this is the real story and uh and this is our real passion too i mean this is what I live for. This is what Jax lives for. We were literally just talking about, you know, our work and, and purposeful work and meaningful work and, and what our passion is and it's people it's helping. It's, it's through stories, through teaching, through coaching, through actionables, through education, through hands-on experiences, whatever it looks like. Um, just huge advocates and fans of bringing all this to life people. and, and people. people. Yeah. So take care of people and trying to serve and do, do more for others. No, thank you for saying that doc. Cause that's exactly true, but let's dive in, dude. Let's dive in here. Overcoming adversities in business and in life. Is there any, is there any particular adverse adversity that you'd like to talk about down and we could kind oh, of dissect man. it? Like, where do I start? I don't know. I, I, uh, <laughs> we've all been through adversity, right? The reason why <laughs> totally. real quick, Dal, real quick, Dal, before you start, the reason why we selected this topic is we've kind of noticed the reoccurring theme that's coming up on the growth cast. It's kind of just this reoccurring theme of adversity. Everybody goes through adversity. Everybody goes through trials. Sometimes those trials seem to last forever, but it's how do you get through those? How do you make those benefit you and, and really turn that situation to benefit yourself? So that's yeah. what we want to do today. Bring to life some adversity, bring to life some trials, and then how Dallas has overcome them, how I've overcome them, and then hopefully some actionables that y'all can implement in your lives. So that's, the, that's the whole idea here. With totally. Today. Okay, like so that, life, life is adversity, right? It's yeah, like totally. physical pains in the body, weather, you know, whatever, like yeah. adversity takes lots of different shapes and forms. But, um, you know, personally, man, I I'll go on the life side first. Um, I'm trying to think of maybe some of my biggest adversities that I've, I've faced. And one of those came when my, before you second, do your life yeah. one, before you do your life one, do you want me to do a business one? Yeah, let's go. Let's start with you business. probably let's go don't that sequence. Let's go business first, and then we'll, we'll go, go life first. second. Let's dive into go your business. side. Yeah, no, I can definitely go over an adversity that I've come in with business, and I'll be very transparent. I've kind of become very transparent on the growth cast. So whether everybody wants to hear that or not, that's just <laughs> what it is. Okay, I'm gonna definitely be transparent. We welcome the transparency and vulnerability. I, I do, we do. about it here. I do. So it was about this is the trial that I kind of went through. It's probably about. At this point, we're probably looking about six years ago. Six years ago, I started working with Tyler Devereaux. That's when I started working with Ty. It was about six years ago. It's crazy. Six I didn't years know ago, you guys were working with each other six years ago. Yeah. Like, again, just for reference, people, I've been in the picture for two. Yeah. So I've been working with Ty for about six years. About six years ago, I started working with Tyler. We were doing, we were putting on events, teaching real estate for a different company. Now we have the multifamily mindset where we get to decide what we teach in the curriculum, and it's fantastic. But at the time, we were working for another real estate educator and we were putting on seminars for him and putting on events for him. Dave Lindahl, fantastic individual. Love that dude. He gave us both really great opportunities. But I was so out of my comfort zone, dude. I got the opportunity and it was like one of those opportunities where it's like, you don't say no, you get the opportunity. You're going to at least go give it a try. You're going to at least go give it a try. I got out there. I had no idea what I was doing. I'd never been in a sales environment in my life. You're like I you've done never, this before, right? And you're like, yeah, yeah sure. totally. 
no idea. I had no <laughs> idea what I was doing out there. No idea. I just knew it was a really good opportunity. And I knew Tyler was a good dude. I knew I trusted him and I knew like, I, I knew he would help me and he would take care of me if I needed any help. I just, I had that feeling and I knew he would. And th- dude, that's what happened where I went and I had no idea what was going on. And it was a trial for me, dude. I felt so much like pressure. I felt so much stress. I felt so much. If I don't get any sales, I'm not going to have this job. I really want this job. It's a great opportunity. Anyway, this was an adversity for me now looking, thinking back on it. It's very small, very small adversity in the, in the, in the grand scheme of things. But the adversity that I came across there was I just was a fish out of water. And I think that's so relatable. A lot of the times with a lot of our new students jumping into multifamily real estate, they feel like a fish out of water and they feel like they are just, they have no idea what's going on. I know what that feels like. I know what that, adverse, that, that trial and the, that, that trial that comes, I know what that feels like. And I know how rough it is. And I know how easy it is also to bury your head in the sand and not look at any of the problems and just be like, I'm here. I'm doing the best I can. I'm here. I'm here. I'm trying. It's very easy to go down that route and do those and, and go and go have that mindset, and have that frame of mind, but it's not what's going to benefit you. So what I learned in that adversity was in that trial was just to stay the course, stay the course, trust the people around you, listen, be observant and implement the things that you know, or that, that you're being told by these people, right? Again, we talk about this all the time, man. There's a strategy to almost everything that anybody does. If anybody's successful and has made a whole lot of wealth, there's a strategy behind that. So it's really just figuring out what that strategy is and using that system, using that strategy to gain success. And that's exactly what I did in that, in that, in that, in that adversity, in that trial that I was facing is I got with Tyler. I figured out what worked. I figured out what didn't work, figured out my system will work best for me. And I ended up being like, when COVID came around, I ended up being, I think I was probably the top salesman on, on, on that, on that, on that team. I I know I was for sure, at least for our last event, but regardless, it's just crazy that if you stick to a system and you stick to the people that have done it before you, I guess that's the actionable out of this. And you listen to them and you know, it's successful. You stick to that and you trust that system and you work hard and you have good intentions you're going to, you're going to come out totally. of that. You're going to come out of that on the other oh, side. I, uh, so that's six years ago, six, six years, years ago, ago. And now I live in Maui. I work in an office right next to Tyler and my life's completely changed from that opportunity that, that I almost gave up that I seriously was like, Oh, I can't do this. It's too stressful, yeah. but I pushed through. So dude, that's just, that's, that's my experience. That's how I overcame that adversity. I don't know if you have anything you want to What was funny is you used, uh, I, I actually, question jotted a few things down just because I was like super impactful and I wanted to review them as actionables, um, flips, flip seats here. So Sweet. you use the word opportunity and you use the word trial. Um, you actually started with the word trial and then you ended with the word opportunity or you like interchanged those two as we went through. And yeah. I just thought that was a great actionable is because they're, they're literally the same thing, right? It's yeah. like so many people don't view it that way. They don't view yeah. a trial as an opportunity. Um, trials are opportunities yeah. and, and literally changing your mindset, changing the way you view life yeah. um, and adversity as it pops up, yeah. um, I think is a key factor to being able to figure it out is, you know, you've got yeah. to view that in a positive light. You've got to view it in an abundant with, with an abundant mentality, not a scarcity mentality, which is within that trial, dude, there's all these golden nuggets that are going to be coming your way. They're going to taste great and uh, it's going to be oh, awesome. Man but they're not free. They don't come for no, free. You no. have to work for them. And no. uh, so I just thought that was an interesting thing there that you, you unconsciously, I think in your, even in your, cause you were moving through dialogue is you yeah. use the word opportunity and then you use the word trial. And then you actually came back to the word opportunity. And I think for the majority of the time you use the word op- opportunity, but you did yeah. interchange trial That's and funny. opportunity like did multiple it, but, times, Yeah, but it's because I, they're literally the same thing. Yeah. But also, just another little side note, actionable there as well. I truly believe a life hack is the verbiage you use. Like oh, instead yeah. of the the word trial, powerful. instead of using the word trial, use it like opportunity. Instead of using the word problem, use the word difficulty. Difficulties can be overcome a little bit easier than problem. You know what I mean? Just just use that certain totally. verbiage in, yeah. certain, in certain ways. It's a huge mindset hack, and I, I truly believe that. For sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks for pointing that out, dude. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. 
a couple other things you mentioned was, you know, stay the course. These were actionable, stay the course, listen, be observant, lean in, don't, don't resist, um, focus on learning and, and be patient. You know, yeah. those are key, um, factors in being able to endure through a trial or, or figure out or extract the, the golden nuggets, if you will, from the opportunity, right? Like totally. again, tomato, tomato, extract yeah. the golden nuggets from the, from the opportunity or endure the trial. Well, guess what? That's the same thing. So, but those, those are some of those steps yeah, that's how you overcome adversity again. So I just thought that was, that was awesome. Thanks for sharing, man. I, yeah, dude, mine's on Love. a different light, um, or, or on a different, uh, lane in a different lane of, of life, right? Like business, mm -hmm. but these come in all different shapes and forms, adversity, trials, challenges. Like again, life is full of them in business. It's same thing, full of them. Um, and so for me, gosh, man, like on a personal level, I've definitely faced some trials, some, some challenges in my life, been hit with some adversity. Um, some of the hardest you know, some of the hardest ones are the things that just like surprise the heck out of you that come out of nowhere. Right. Yeah. And so for me, like one of those was, was when my son was born, um, my wife was diagnosed, uh, with placenta previa and my wife, um, I don't know, diagnosed the word. Yeah. I mean, they found out she had placenta previa and, yeah. and, and okay. I, we had no damn clue what that meant. Um, you Google it, not always the wisest choice. Some scary things popped up, but it's like, there's this small percentage and long story short, we go through the pregnancy, totally fine. Um, day before she's supposed to go in and have a C-section, um, we go get an amniocentesis, which is this huge needle about made me throw up just even looking at it. They wouldn't let me watch. They stick it into her abdomen, pull out some you know fluid, make sure the baby's mature enough to come early. And we got good stats. We're like, sweet, awesome. We're scheduled for nine o'clock in the morning. Doctor tells us, Hey, if your wife goes into labor, you guys need to get to the hospital. Like if she for water breaks, you need to get to the hospital, like super fast, like emergency situation. And he's like, probably won't happen. Small percentage, dude, I go to bed. My wife gets up and it was like 1232, 1233, something like that at night. And I heard a noise in the bathroom and I walked in there and it looked like she had cut a limb off and, and I just wow. panic wrap her up in some blankets, get in, the, get in the truck, fly to the hospital, turn the, the flashers on drive past a cop, pull into the emergency room lane, leave my door open, run up, take her to the hospital room. Of course, she's going to be fine, right? Like we're at the hospital. They're going to pump her yeah. full of medicine. I'd had one baby prior. My wife had had one baby prior. So it's like, yeah. I mean, it was it's a blur. Right? Right? It's like, they'll fix yeah, everything. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. they can tell I'm like panicked and, and kind of like glazed over. And they're like, hey, go, go park your car. Like, it's okay. You can go park your car. I'm like, okay. I come upstairs after parking my car and, and the whole floor is in my wife's hospital bed. And like every person on deck, my wife's as white as that ceiling behind you. And I'm like, what scared. the hell is going on? Yeah. Yeah. Scared, right? Those are the feelings you feel. Confused. Scared, yeah. confused. And I start getting mad at people. And, and then they take her and they basically have the conversation with me. Like, Hey, we're gonna do everything we can to save your wife and your son. And man, it, it was just like, a total just deck to the face. Like I didn't even, like I was dazed and confused. Anyways, they take her down and, and within two seconds, dude, I swear I felt like my son is in, in the nursery and they're, they've got him on a machine and long story short, dude, like it was chaos for hours. My wife had to have a bunch a blood transfusion fusion. She had lost, lost like half her body, uh, half of the blood in her body. She was on the verge of losing her life. Um, my son couldn't breathe. He had aspirated blood and, and, and uh -oh. it was just chaos. He got on a, on a machine and they Scary. weren't able to, they had to life flight him. I get in a freaking helicopter with my son, leave my wife in emergency surgery at the hospital. Yeah. I never dreamed in a million years. I would ever like go through something like this, let alone my wife and son would go through something like this. And, uh, so dude, that was, that was some major adversity. And the path after that was like, it was long. And, and, and by long, it wasn't even just like long with 
bringing home the baby with oxygen and like my wife and the struggles that came post baby and that situation, like it wasn't just like three months, like there were like ongoing traumatic types of responses, and like things that we weren't even, couldn't even like put a finger on. I swear for like three years. Wow. It was wild. Yeah. Um, maybe even to this day, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but like yeah. that one right there threw me for a loop. And yeah. for me, I mean, there were, there were, there were a couple things that got me through that, that I believe are very applicable here with adversity, right? Yeah. You talked about a few here. One that I would add, dude is, and I'm not going to shy away from it is, is dude, just connecting to a higher power. Like there were so many things outside of my control in, in the midst of that challenge, in the midst of that trial. Um, but there was this overwhelming feeling of it's, and this is something I've, I don't, I've, I don't even know if I've like publicly shared, but like there was this overwhelming feeling of whatever happens, it's going to be okay. Like it's going to be okay. And all I could do is choose. And I'm going to use the word specific here. All I could do was choose to believe that that response I was getting. And I had the choice, dude. Like I had the choice. I could have been like, what do you F that? Like no yeah. way, but I chose to believe. And that spiraled in, in a positive way. So many better actions in the midst of that trial, right. Being able to step up for my daughter who was fine and home with other family members, being able to step up for my wife who's stuck in the hospital by herself, separate from her son, being able to step up for my son, being able to have the energy, even though all that stuff was going like choosing to believe that message, wherever the freak it came from of like, Hey, no matter what happens, this, this is, you're going to be okay. They're going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I chose to believe that. And the, my belief again, core value, right? Belief. My belief in that made that entire situation gave me the abilities to help impact that entire situation for yeah. the better. And had I chose to say no or screw that and be negative or resi resistant, dude, I, it would have complicated things. And, and so, yeah, you know, I think choice, <laughs> you can't ever get outside of, of that factor that choice is such an important actionable in and of itself. And belief is an actionable, um, and, and marrying, you know, choice, belief to literal action and like following through with that. Um, those were things that just were extremely impactful and, and that belief in a higher power. Again, I would never tell anybody who to believe in what to believe in, but man, you, you can't only rely on yourself in certain situations, trials, challenges. I would argue everything, but specifically in the midst of like a very hard trial challenge that those are key, key components in my opinion. Dude, there's first off, thank you for sharing that. I didn't even know this. That's I knew that that had happened, but not into the details that you just shared, man. So thank you for sharing. I'm sure that I'm sure that kind of musters up some of those feelings. It was weird, like talking so, about it. Like it was yeah, like, probably, you probably felt almost felt like panic a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, dude. So I appreciate you. I appreciate you sharing that. And the most, I, I, I think the most impactful part of you sharing that dude was right at the end when you talked about, I had this feeling and I just felt like I should believe it. And then there was something you said there, dude, that I think that's where a lot of people stop, dude. They believe it. They believe that it's like, they believe they're going to be taken care of by this high, by God, by a higher power. They feel that they, they believe that it's all, everything's going to be okay. But what you added is the most important part. And that's taking the action based on that belief, yeah. not based on something else. You're taking an action based on that. It's going to be okay. And that, that alone is a success principle that if you just follow that one, you're going to be okay. At this yeah. Point. I want to so, add to that, dude. Thank you. Thank, add you to that. For, thank you for sharing that, bro. Such a good reminder. Oh, you're very welcome. I, I, I appreciate you uh, diving into the topic. I mean, it's good to, it's good to bring these things to the forefront for us, for everybody. Yeah. Um, because again, like everybody goes through something, everybody goes through something that, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, take the family 
take the family that was in the hospital a week before us, right? So it's a rare thing that placenta previa goes to a grade that that it attaches to like vital organs and things like that, um, like like it happened with my wife, um, but it had happened a week prior at the hospital, and unfortunately, whoever that mother was, they had had a death a wow. couple of weeks, a week or a week or two weeks prior, right? Wow. Um, and and it's just, I mean, so sad, right? And 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 it's like. How, how, why? Right. You start asking questions like why, like there, but why? not here. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. but again, I, I think I, I wanted to drive this home. Um, I guess that my point there is like, we all face trials and s- some are bigger than others. Right. Regardless, they're trials. And, yeah. uh, I never, I never chose to feel like a victim in my situation. My wife never chose that's to feel a, like a victim in her situation. That's another um, thing that I wanted to highlight. Was, and that was you know, a really important thing about adversity there, man. You yeah. Choose. You choose how you're going to respond, dude. I think that's like one of, that's another, it's another really great mindset and growth principle is that even when shit hits the fan, you get to decide if you're going to dodge it or if you're going to catch it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I know that sounds so silly, but at the end of the day, dude, you were going to, you were going to make that decision. Are you going to avoid the problem? Or are you going to attack the problem and take care of the problem and clean up whatever it is? Totally. And you get to choose. Shit is going to hit the fan, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's like not yeah, even yeah. if, but like it's, it's going to hit the fan. Uh-huh. I wanted yeah. to reiterate something here, like on this topic, and then we can close this thing out. There's a lot of actionables already. And yeah. again, you and I could talk for days on this topic yeah. because I think it's probably one of the most important ones. You know, again, I guess, ground 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 level like deep root of growth mindset is challenges are blessings challenges are 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 things that we should run towards now again you're not going to run towards the situation that i just broke down you're not going to run towards the you you did run towards a difficult situation right they get a little bit different there but regardless of like how it comes about whether you ran towards it you you knew what you were signing up for or it, it it sideswipes you and hits you right in the back of the head in the most unpolite way possible, no matter what you have to embrace the difficult, you have to embrace the hard, you have to lean into it and you have to go through those steps that you, you broke down. So great. Um, and those other additional steps that I added. Um, but I wanted to dude. I wanted to close out with this. Is, Is this cool? If I close it out, close this out with this, uh, this ties into a drip prior in the week here, um, the self pity trap episode 484. And there's, there's, um, a book, uh, called tiny, beautiful things. And the author is Cheryl Strayed. And and this is what she said on the victim piece, right? Like choosing, never choosing to be a victim, no matter the challenge. She said, nobody's going to do your life for you. You have to do it yourself, whether you're rich or poor out of money or raking it in the beneficiary of ridiculous fortune or terrible injustice. And you have to do it no matter what is true, no matter what is hard, no matter what unjust, sad, sucky things befall you. Self-pity is a dead end road. You make the choice to drive down it. It's up to you to decide to stay parked there or to turn around and drive out. And wow. uh, I love that, that reference from her book. And if I could close out those actionables, um, that would be the last one I would add to it is don't ever, no matter the challenge, whether again, it's one you ran towards purposefully or one that freaking hit you in the back of the head, unknowing, right? Don't ever, as a result, choose to drive down that dead end road because that view sucks. It's yeah. empty and it will have a negative impact and make your life even harder. So please, if there's one actionable that you get out of all these actionables, which there was a lot, choose to never drive down the self-pity road. It does not produce anything fulfilling. And and when you're facing adversity, it's the worst thing you could do. The worst totally. thing. It's Dallas, thank you selfish. So for- it's selfish. Yeah, it Dallas, thank you so much for your wisdom, your time, and for sharing that experience, man. So powerful. I learned a lot from it, and I'm sure our listeners will as well. So Likewise. thank you, my man. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. And listening to the growth cast again, just another reminder to share this episode with somebody that you think could benefit from it, which is everybody. So share it. We love you. We appreciate you. Have a great rest of your weekend. Take care.